Let's uh, talk to former Trump attorney Jenna Ellis right now, who is joining us. Uh, Donald Trump's lawyers are opposing the DOJ's request to continue using seized documents to justify their predetermined conclusions. DOJ also opposes a special master to review their seizure, uh, their, their seizure of those documents, Jenna. Doesn't this lack of transparency undermine the trust Americans have for the DOJ and the FBI? Of course it does, and it undermines everything that Merrick Garland purported to be in favor of when he came out uh, shortly after the FBI raid and said that he wanted transparency and he wanted accountability to bolster the credibility of the FBI and the DOJ. And now, after this judge has reasonably said that an independent third party could review the documents just to make sure to protect President Trump's constitutionally protected rights under the Fourth Amendment, now they're appealing this decision. Why? If they are so interested in transparency, as you've said, the question is, why on earth would they oppose this? They shouldn't. And a special master needs to be immediately appointed and obviously go through all of this to make sure that the DOJ and the FBI are not above the law. Everyone loves to say President Trump isn't above the law, but neither is the DOJ or the FBI. Right. I mean, Hillary Clinton made news here recently saying nobody's above the law. Coming from that woman, whoo, was that rich. Uh, America First Legal Foundation taking action against the National Archives Association over their efforts to, to conceal federal records on Joe, James, and Hunter Biden's dealings. Uh, when it comes to former President Trump, the archives, well, they want everything right now, and we got we to gotta raid Mar-a-Lago. But they're slow walking anything having to do with, with the Bidens. Doesn't that raise legitimate questions about what's going on at the National Archives. It does. And I think that a lot of us are very surprised to see how deep the deep state actually runs. I mean, going to some place that should be just a record keeping organization should not be political, like the National Archives. Now, suddenly we're seeing how deep the deep swamp and the deep state goes with the National Archives uh, combating this type of simple request for transparency and also going on the offensive against President Trump. This smacks of partisan politics yet again, and the American people are sick and tired of it. And Stephen Miller, Mark Meadows, and others that are involved in the America First Legal Foundation and others like our friends uh, Tom Fitton at Judicial Watch, who was the one that led the charge to get uh, the redacted uh, copy of that affidavit. David, these are people who are great watchdogs in Washington and are trying to hold the partisan and politically biased bureaucracy and the swamp accountable, and they're doing a great job. And then there's this, uh, Biden Security and Exchange Commissioner, Gary Gensler, I believe is his name, previously served as Hillary Clinton's campaign chief, chief financial officer. It was this guy who approved payments for the discredited steel dossier. And now Joe Biden is picking uh, an MSNBS pundit, uh, Hunter Biden laptop denier guy, Jeremy Bash, for his intelligence advisory board. I mean, here, here are, it, it's, political patronage goes on all the time, I suppose, I mean, from both political parties, but this is kind of in your face, isn't it? It is, and it just shows that the Biden administration and the people who are actually controlling it, uh, which include, of course, former uh, President Obama's uh, whole administration, they don't care what the American people think. They don't care what the approval ratings are. They don't care whether or not they're actually serving you and me, the American people. They don't care whether they are staying within the margins of the U.S. Constitution, because that's exactly what tyrants and authoritarians do. They don't care what the citizens that they are obligated under the the Constitution of the United States in this country are mandated and obligated to do. And Constitution Day is this weekend, September 17th, and I hope that everyone takes a step back and actually reads that document, reads the limited powers of the federal government that are given by we the people to our federal government, and we'll compare and contrast that to this overreaching, absolutely partisan and tyrannical and fascist, if I can say that word against Biden, uh, against <laughs> what our document is actually designed to preserve and protect, which is the rights of we the people against an overreaching government. And the Biden administration has overreached literally every opportunity that they can possibly take. Yeah, Barack Obama is infamous for calling the Constitution a set of negative liberties because he's upset that it, it limits what the government can do 
for you in his rationale, but it also limits what the government can do to you. And that's why we conservatives like it that way. But that's, that, that's how the American left looks at our Constitution. Instead of revering it, they want to get rid of it. They want to shelve it. They don't like it very much. Jenna Ellis, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. September is historically the worst performing month for the stock market, so you better be ready for it. The Fed continues to aggressively raise rates, and J.P. Morgan is forecasting another mega rate hike September the 21st. Is that why Jamie Dimon said an economic hurricane is coming our way? Well, gold and silver have remained remarkably stable despite the Fed aggressively raising rates today. The Patriot Gold Group has a special incentive for Newsmax viewers. Huge! Now precious metals investors can enjoy the No Fee for Life Gold and Silver IRA on qualifying rollovers or enjoy free, discreet, insured shipping on all direct gold and silver purchases. Here's the number, 800-356-4470. Call 800-356-4470 today. 